It's not like the old days. It's not like the old days. What's good, Hollywood? Did you see me? Yeah, I saw you. Good. You see how close you came to me? I got so close I could smell your icy hot. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call the police then. Tell them to bring their respirators. Ooh, respirators. That didn't take long. That didn't take long to get that intro started. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta dive right in. <gasps> Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Spook Cast. You ugly. No, you're not ugly. You're you're nice looking. I'm not gonna be nice. I'm not gonna be mean to you. I'm not gonna be mean to you. You're nice looking. You're a nice little young lad. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Spook Cast, episode 222. It's the final episode of Spooktober. It's the last one. It's the last one. All right, turn that shit down, would you? Would you turn that shit down to its till it's off? Thank you. Whoops. <laughs> last episode of Spooktober. Last one. There was four in total. This is the last one. The date for you watching this at home is October 26th. Next week, all you little boys and girls are going to be running up and down the streets collecting candy from strangers anyone doing trunk or treating that shit's bullshit i hate that no i don't hate it we don't say hate anymore we don't say hate do i like trunk or treating i guess i have to i have no choice now do i what am i gonna do change the name of the game and say go back to the old ways I went to the West Edmonton Mall a few years ago and they were, the kids were trick-or-treating in the mall. Every store had candy and they were going from store to store. It's not what I did when I was a kid. I went from house to house by myself while I had friends. Or did I? And we went door to door, crack houses and all pedophiles and all it didn't matter we would go we'd show up we'd ask for candy they'd either say yes or they wouldn't answer or they'd say no isn't it funny when you're a child and you you go trick-or-treating and you knock on a door and they answer it and you go trick-or-treat and they go i don't have any candy okay well why did you open the door huh Why'd you open the door? Or or the people who put a sign up... <laughs> the people who put a sign up immediately, right as the trick-or-treating time begins, they put a sign up that says, ran out of candy. Okay, you ran out of candy, did you? It's 4 p.m. No one's even out yet. How did you run out of candy? You put the wrong sign up. You should have put a sign up that said, I have no candy. Now fuck off. That would be that would make more sense. But I guess some people feel bad. They're like, I don't want to say I don't have any candy because that just means I'm I'm the little arsehole in town who didn't bother to buy any. So I'm just gonna write ran out of candy, but they didn't think. They didn't use their nig nog. No, they didn't. They just wrote, I ran out of candy and stuck it on their door. So when, you go, when you're the first kid to show up at the house and you see the sign, you get confused. You go, Mommy, how did they run out of candy when we just started? It's because they never had any candy, Timothy. They never had any candy. They hate children. That's what, that's what that sign is. We hate children. 
And I'll be honest, I'm not giving out candy, and I haven't given out candy in actually my entire adult life. I have not once given out candy. Not once. I'm about to turn 30 in a couple of weeks, and I have not once handed out candy to little children. And luckily I've, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say I lived in places where they wouldn't even think to knock, whether it's a basement suite or my door was in the backyard or some shit. This place that I live in, they ain't getting in here. They're not even going to consider it here because there's other doors to knock on. They're not even going to come near. And if they do come to this door, I've got a shotgun. And I'll answer the door and I'll go, chick, chick. Huh? You coming to my door knocking? I'll fucking blast your brains out, little squirch. Yeah, that's right. I called you a squirch. What you gonna do about it, you little squirch? You ain't gonna do nothing. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Shut your fucking mouth. You'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. Not one of you'll do nothing. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here! That's what I'll say to the kids when they come at the door. Shut your fucking mouth, you'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. Not one of you will do nothing. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> oh, with a shotgun in my head. Fucking shoot the little children. Boom! They'd be banging down the back streets. Hitting athletes, something on rack leaks. <sighs> Ice Cube, you heard of him? NWA? <laughs> with attitude? <laughs> Did I say it? You'll never know because it's bleeped. I might have said it, or maybe I didn't. <laughs> You'll never know. What if I forgot to bleep it? But I didn't say it. I didn't say it, though. That's the thing. I didn't say it. Or did I? <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't say it. I, why would I say that? I'd, I've never said that. I've never said it. Go back and look at all my videos. You'll never, ever find me say it. Go ahead. Go look. Go look. I probably said it. I know. Actually, I, there is one instance on this channel where I know I said it, but I think I was able to cut it out with a YouTube editor, but it was on YouTube for years. It was when I was really young too, you know, when the channel first started in, in 2009. Young lad throwing the N word around. I was playing a character though. I was playing a World War II veteran, an old man. You know, him, fucking uh, Harold Jenkins. That was a character I used to do. My friends loved them. God, I miss those days. But it's okay. It's okay to miss those days. Just don't dwell on them too much. Why don't we start things off right? Why don't we start things off a little crispy, huh? Why don't we start things off a little sexy and, and, and crenaceous? I know I've said I know I've said things. I know I've said things about AJ and Big Justice, and I said I'm sick of them. And to be completely frank, I am sick of them. Of course I'm sick of them. Why wouldn't I be sick of them? But they just keep showing up. And you know what? You got to give them credit. You got to give them credit because they don't give up. I love someone who doesn't give up. If you want to get something done, you never give up. You never give up. Even if you're shitty at it every time. Even if you fail and, and shit... And you shit all over the place every time you do it. You keep going. Because each time you get a little... Sorry, I got some goblins in my throat. Oopa loopa body ass bitch! Each time you get a little better. You know what I'm talking about. I don't need to give you a fucking... I don't need to give you a fucking... I don't need to give you a fucking... A fucking... Uh, a lesson on... 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 My... Life. You know better. All right, but we got AJ and Big Justice on the scene. They're everywhere. They're at, they're at basketball games. 
They're at malls. They're everywhere. They're at Costco. They're everywhere. All right? And, and, and when anyone becomes somebody, when anybody becomes anybody, the internet comes about and the internet says, hey, hey guy, why don't we, why don't we take your image and uh, AI-ify you? Huh? What does that mean, you say? AI, we, we're going to take you and we're going we're gonna to mess with your image and turn you into an AI fucking fantasy figure. We've seen it before, the UFC fighters. All right, you know, remember when Conor McGregor was a little fucking leprechaun as AI? All right, they did it with AJ and Big Justice. They did the whole crew. So why don't we watch it together, shall we? Here's AJ right here with his big fucking double chunk chocolate cookie. And he's got another one in his pocket. Munch. Oh, there's Big Justy. What's up, Big? Oh, the Riz. Look at that boy. Who's that? Is that a... Wait, is that... Oh. Goddamn, girl. Wait, what? Is it... This looks like fucking... Neon. Is this Neon? Or is this someone else in the fucking AJ Big Justice universe? But that's the daughter. And that's... I don't, this guy's always in the videos. I don't know if he's related to them. And who's that? I don't know who that is. He's got a map. Who, is that another one? Who's that? We gotta read the comments stat. Because I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at here. Who are those people? Ashley Nike Pros. Everyone says that. What's the Nike Pros? What is that? Why does everyone every on every big justice video that features Ashley, they say Ashley Nike Pros. What does that mean? What does that mean? What am I missing here? I'm gonna i I'm gonna give it a goog and see what I can find. Ah fuck's sakes. Nike Pros meaning. Urban dictionary. Ah, Nike pros are hot on any guys, girls, and maybe even your dog. If a bitch got these on, I'ma go crazy. Ah, uh, don't, don't wear them if you, if you, if you don't got a fatty. Oh shit! Did you see Natalie in them Nike pros today? Fine. The shorts girls wear that makes guys go rock hard instantly. Basically means I want to fuck this thing. It looks so hot. Okay. I get it now, I guess. Kind of. Uh, I guess. I, I mean, I, 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 I guess I get it. Kind of. So basically, they're all just saying they want to they wanna fuck Ashley. How old? She's not old enough. Guys, come on. Leave her alone. She's not old enough yet. Look, there's another one. Ashley Nike Pros. I just came here to fucking... To figure out... Who, okay, so Jersey Joe. Who's Jersey Joe? I really should be wearing my glasses. I can't fucking see shit, dude. This is crazy. I never had eye problems until fucking a year or so ago. That's that's not Jersey Joe. This is like a boxer. Jersey Joe. Jersey. Look at him. Look at this guy. Look at him. Are you looking at him? I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up. You want to fuck with me? I'll fuck on you. Bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. He's like a fucking... Well, he's a boxer. He's a boxer. Just like fucking... Michael Tyson. Michael Tyson is going to fight Jake Paul. And, uh, oh, man. It's, it's, it's a senior citizen versus a, a somewhat good athlete. Ashley Justice, I swear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all want Ashley Justice, huh? Y'all, y'all don't give a fuck. I, she, I don't think she's old enough, dude. I think she's underage. And all these little hot and horny bastards are giving her the Nike pros in the comments. 
Every single video, they all Nike Pro her. And now I know what it means, so... See, I thought when they were putting Nike Pros in the comments, I thought that just meant, like, there was a video of her wearing Nike Pros, and people thought that was a sexy video. So they were just commenting that to get the blue comment so people would click on it and see that video of her looking sexy in the Nike Pros. But it turns out the Nike Pros term is just used for anyone, anywhere, anytime, any place, any how, any who, any what. Don't fuck with me, Gregory. Don't fuck with me, Greg. I see you. Does anybody want to do another another story time with Alexa? Oh, she I activated her. Never I'm just kidding, Alexa. I'm just kidding. She's a crazy bitch sometimes, you know? Nah, we won't. We won't. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's, let's show, show me, me my, my moves. <laughs> Um, let's move on. Brendan Schwab. Brendan Schwab. Brendan Schaub. Brendan Schaub. You know him. You either hate him or you tolerate him. That seems to be what the whole internet does. They either hate him or they tolerate him. Uh, and then if you find a fan of Brendan Schaub, they're very rare. Because he's in this void of nothingness. Until now. Until now. All right? If you haven't heard the drama, I will fill you in. So Brendan, uh, he put out a video expressing his uh, concerns for his... One of his uh, 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 martial... Oh, ah, 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 ah. One of his, uh, I guess, martial arts companion, buddy. He's got real bad CTE and he's starting to degrade and uh, Brendan Shaw got a little choked up about it. Put out a video and said, I feel bad for my friend. And he's trying to spread awareness for CTE. All right. And that's a good thing. It's a great thing. Okay. And then Nate Diaz. We all know Nate Diaz. All right. His brother's fighting this weekend, which we'll talk about UFC in a minute here. But let me just continue on with this Brendan Shaw sitch. So Nathan Diaz, Nate Diaz comes along and, and he puts out a tweet that says, Brendan the big old pussy shob with a crying face emoji. <laughs> huh? He's calling him a pussy because uh, Brendan feels, feels bad for uh, his friend who has CTE. Now, Nate Diaz and Brendan Schaub, they've had they've been bickering back and forth for a long time. There's even a video of them bickering in person. But you couldn't really hear what they were saying and nothing really happened. So, boppity boopity. Uh, so, anyway, after Nate puts out that tweet, Shab comes back with a video response and claps back. All right? And ever since he put this video out, the amount of love that Brendan Schaub has is receiving is astronomical. Brendan Schaub has been notoriously hated and ridiculed and degraded for years, not only for his comedy, but just for his personality, the things he says, his fighting, like everything. Everyone always shits on Brendan Schaub, always. And I did a little bit, but I, I've always liked Brendan Schaub because he's part of the sphere, he's part of the atmosphere. Okay? I'm a huge fan of stand up comedy. I don't think Brendan Schaub's stand up comedy is funny, but guess what? He's part of the atmosphere. He's put out a couple specials. Yes, they're not great, but he's doing it. All right? And it, nobody becomes successful in comedy overnight no one becomes successful in comedy over five years or even 10 years it takes a long time okay and he's still rising up and he understands this and that's why i like him 
All right. And he's another example of someone who doesn't give up unless it's UFC. But that makes sense because uh, he was getting to a point where he couldn't go any longer. And he needed to give up or else he would be the one with CTE. And then and then Joe Rogan would be making a video concerned about uh, Brendan. OK, now, even though Brendan didn't have the greatest UFC career, he still knocked knocked out Matt Micro Krokop, whatever the fuck his name is. One of the greatest heavyweights of all time. OK, so. <laughs> this is probably the best thing that could have ever happened to Brendan Schaub. The tides have turned. People love Brendan Schaub now. They People love him. He's been tort- notoriously hated forever. And now he's finally getting the love. And I am, I am so stoked to see where this goes. I think this is, this is, this is, we're living in a moment right now where it's a turning point for Brendan, ah, ah, that pinched. It's a turning point for Brendan Schaub. Finally, the swarm of hate has washed away and he is going to be loved and he is being loved. We're seeing it all over the platform. Even people who are not even a part of this world are becoming attracted to this story. All right. And it's because of the response that Brendan Schaub did. And people are acting like they've never seen this side of Brendan Shaw before. He has done this plenty of times with plenty of people. But because you guys have hated him so much, you don't actually get to see Brendan uh, talk like this. Because you avoid him. But now that he's in a fucking beef with Nate Diaz, he's on the forefront of your fucking face. All right? But that's besides the point. I am very happy for Brandon Schaub and where he's at right now. And I think, I know he's smart enough to capitalize on this moment. All right? Because after this response, the entire community, whether it's the UFC community or mixed martial arts community or whatever, or even just the the people who are involved in the comedy world that also follow mixed martial arts, you know, because they are intertwined for a lot of reasons, specifically Joe Rogan, but, you know, everybody wants to see Brendan Schaub fight Nate Diaz. Whether it's a fucking jujitsu match or a mixed martial arts match, something, they want it to happen. And normally it wouldn't make sense to even consider doing this. But now there's so much attention on this right now, of course it makes sense to do it. And I think, I think Brendan's going to push for this to happen. We already know Nate Diaz is desperate to do stuff. All right. He's boxing fucking Jake Paul and Jorge Masvidal just for whatever reason. And it's not even that exciting to watch. But this, Brendan Schaub versus Nate Diaz, hell fucking yeah, dude. Hell yeah. And you know what? I was shocked to see the amount of people that were saying Brendan Schaub would absolutely obliterate Nate Diaz. All right? Even though I said, yes, he's getting all the love, but I just still had it in my head like, oh, it doesn't matter what the credentials are. People hate Brendan Schaub, so they're automatically going to pick Nate Diaz because generally speaking, Nate Diaz is more loved than Brandon Schaub. But when I looked at the comments on every single video, every single response, it's almost overwhelmingly in favor of Brandon Schaub. And it just, it blows my mind to see people on Brandon Schaub's side. Again, with that being said, I've always liked Brandon. Yeah, I made fun of him here and there, but I've always liked Brandon. I'm surprised because it's it's always been hatred towards him and now the tides have turned and people are loving him and I it's it's so refreshing to see it's like yes yeah dude hell yeah So let's watch the response Here's how I feel about it This is just internet gossip right this gets him trending he doesn't have a lot going on The way this works I'm not a civilian like the rest of his goons around him I'm not this fake gangster. I don't go looking for fights. I know I'm tough. I don't have to get on Twitter and blast it out. At the end of the day, I will twist your fucking neck off. Ask your boys. There's many of guys that you fucks with, that I've rolled with. 
ask them how it went. And the difference between you and I, Nate, if you started coming out, getting emotional about your brother's issues with CT and fighting and all this shit, I would support you, even though you've been a dick to me the entire time. But what a real man will do is pull up one-on-one. -on -one. I don't have a posse. I don't need one, bud. I'll drop my kid off at fucking practice, roll over, twist your fucking neck off, and then pick him up just in time unscathed with a Diet Coke. Are you good? Yeah, you are. You ain't gonna do shit. You can get back on Twitter. You can get back on your social media. Go find your next real fight, bud. Go make money, and I'll still support you, dude. I have no issues with you. But if you're looking for one, I'm not hard to find. <gasps> All right. So what are we doing here? You started coming Whoops. out and getting emotional about your brothers. All right. Let's let's make it happen, Brendan. Dude, let's make it fucking happen. And I right now, I'm I'm really feeling like we're going to hear an announcement. I feel like Man, it's it, it, Brendan. Brendan, for sure. Like, come on, man. This is such a good opportunity for you. This is such a good opportunity for you and Nate. All right. Yeah, but I don't know, man. But maybe, but Nate was probably thinking like, okay, now I'm the bad guy. But I don't know. Maybe he wants to play into that. Either way, they're gonna make fucking money. They would make money, dude. Yeah, that's good for both of them. Do it, Nate. Do it, Brandon. Shit, did I move the pumpkin? I don't fucking know, dude. Somewhere over the rainbow, Brandon Shab. Brandon Schaub will fight Nathan Diaz for 50 million. Brandon Schaub. Jackpot. I know it's Halloween. I know it's Halloween. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No! Please stop! Oh, it tickles! Oh, what happening? Oh. <laughs> it's just soap. There's too many AI videos. It's too many. And you know what? I'd say, I'd say to you right fucking now, Gregory, you need to be grateful for this time. I'm serious. I'm going to be dead serious with you right now. Let's get serious for a moment. You need to be grateful for this time. You need to be grateful because two, three, five years tops. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I don't know. I don't speak French. We are going to get to a point where AI is just going to be the dominant factor. AI is going to take over and we are all going to have to bow down to its demands. We are living in the final moments of what is supposed to be uh, reality. In the next five years, we're going to live in an alternate universe. We're going to live in a place where nothing is real. Or at least we're not going to know the difference between what's real and what's fake. So we need to cherish this time. You think it's shitty now? You wait to see what happens. It might, it might not be shitty, but it's going to be different. It's going to be confusing. All right? You look at the old people now who are confused about how to Google something or how to fucking type in their password in Facebook. Imagine how confused they're going to be when the entire world is an illusion in front of their eyes. <laughs> they're not going to survive. We're going to have to kill them off.
We're going to have to kill them off, and then the robots will come in and they'll fuse their robot bodies to our flesh. And we will be half robot, half flesh. And then as time goes on, the flesh will dissolve, and then it will be just robots on the whole planet. And uh, they'll strap a rocket to the bottom of Earth and blast into another galaxy. And then we'll zoom out and find out that we were just a little speck on a piece of dust like Horton Hears a Who. It goes out like we that's all this is. Earth is just a speck of dust. We're just a little micro particle on a on a on a fucking dandelion or something. All right? You zoom out, we're just on a dandelion. It keeps going. It goes down or out. Doesn't matter. Isn't that crazy? And I'm sitting here with a fucking dinosaur outfit on. Talking to you about Brendan Shab. I'm talking to you about Brendan's scab. Okay. What are we doing here, folks? Oh, shice. Did I pause it? Yes, I did. So remember last episode I was talking about TikTok and how and how TikTok, my algorithm is not uh, gorythmed well anymore. It's uh, my algorithm has changed completely. I don't see funny, random poop farts. I don't see any of that crap anymore. My TikTok algorithm is like David Goggins and UFC and fucking <sighs> life advice, you know? I get the odd funny video here and there, but it's not nearly as good as it used to be. But I, I flop on over to Instagram Reels, and guess what? It's like a ref- refreshing slab of salami on a brioche bun with mayonnaise and pepper. Maybe a little green pepper. I said pepper twice, but it's two different peppers. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, a fresh cracked, fresh cracked pepper, green pepper, bell peppers. Maybe a little, uh, put a little lettuce on there with with some red onion. Ooh, maybe some cheese. Mmm. A little bit of shredded steak. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Maybe a little Southwest sauce. Oh yeah. Oh, put it all on there. Slather it on. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah, put something else on there. Put some Parmesan. Ooh, sprinkle that on there. Slice it in half. Ooh, maybe maybe toast it. Put it in the toaster. Mmm, crunch, crunch. Okay? That's what Instagram Reels is now. It's everything I ever wanted. Everything I ever had in TikTok is now on Instagram Reels. And it puts a smile on this little dragon's face. So why don't we watch some... Why don't we refresh our brain a little bit? Before we get into our final Spooktober event. Huh? You thought we weren't going to get spooky. You thought we weren't going to get spooky. You were you were in this episode and you were like, oh, it's the final episode of Spooktober. Why isn't he doing anything spooky? <laughs> Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card, but you find out anyway. I forgot to say that. Don't worry, we'll get spooked. We have one final spook. One final spook for all you fine feathered friends. And then we're into November next episode. So why don't we clear the palette a little bit, huh? It's been a little too spooky lately. Let's get a few laughs in. Let's get a few laughs in. Ha 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 ha! That was funny! Fat lady on a ladder! <laughs> she didn't look too hurt, huh? She didn't look too hurt. The only problem with Instagram Reels is it can't rewind. Instagram, please, I beg you, get your shit together, please. Hire me, I will fix this. 
If oh, Mr. Instagram, are you listening right now? I can fix this for you. We don't like it anymore. We don't like it anymore. I used to have a lot of road rage. Don't touch each other, please. And that's what I would say. That's what I would that's what other people would say to me when I would get my road rage and I'd stop the car and I'd uh, I'd roll down the window and I'd yell at them and and then my passenger would say, "Don't touch each yeah. other, please. Don't touch each yeah. other." Please. A little fucking rock. And then I would yell that. A little fucking rock. But, uh, I, road rage, no one's a winner. Any kind of rage, no one's a winner. Whether you fight fist, fight fist, or fight fist with fists, or, or whether you fight mouth with mouth words. Either way, it doesn't end, it doesn't end, it doesn't end well. Yes, I know how to speak. Yes, I speak English. I just don't speak French. In case you were wondering. This is an example of a road rage incident where the person at fault, well, actually, we don't know the person at fault, but we can kind of guess just by judging based off the evidence that we see laid out in front of us. But there's a happy ending. We love happy endings, okay? You're the one swerving. I was just following you. I'm the one swerving? Oh, watch. Uh, just I'm watch. Watch closely. Yeah, it was actually... Oh. Oh. And, okay. Fuck you, dog. Ooh, she got You're crushed. The she got crushed. Did you see her? See her body get squished? That had to have hurt. But guess what? She's the one being a little bizitch. Don't get out of your car if you're not going to put her in park, girl. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. Then I've a shava sabo shava and I never really had a clue. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Who here loves Oasis? You know I do. You know I do. Remember the, uh, what was that little character we watched? It was like Bopski or something. Whatever. I found another one, basically. So now it's gonna be the day when we're gonna get back to you. So how? You know how? Well, you know what you had to do. Ooh. <coughs> Clear the I don't believe oh, in anybody. Feels right to about you now. Now, is that from smoking? Or is that fat? Or is that just how she is? Who knows? Who knows, but either way, she has the voice of an angel. And I'm going to hire her to sing at my birthday. Right? Wouldn't that be nice? Today is going to be the day when we're going to get back to you. <laughs> Today is going to be the day. She even... Oh, no, never mind. I thought this was her page. Oh... That's got to be cigarettes, right? Are we just busting through these? Yeah, we're just going to bust through them. Normally I'd save them, you know, spread them out through the video, but we got to bust through them so that we can get to the spooks, dude. Okay, it's Halloween. And you know what happens during Halloween? Jason comes out. There's always a Jason video every year. Every year, someone's dressed up as Jason. Jason, Freddy, Jason, Jason. You know, ever since the Jason franchise became a thing, everyone comes about and they are dressed up as Jason. They have to do a Jason video. Okay? Is this Jason? Yeah, this is Jason. And, uh... It's, there's always one every single year. There's always a Jason video where someone does something that hurts themselves. They hurt themselves in a Jason mask. Every year. Are you okay, Jason? Oh, he's, oh, you're not okay. Are you okay? Are you okay, Jason? That's a British accent. Theo Vaughn's in the comments. Memphis. He knows what's up. 
Let's watch it again. Are you okay? You alright? You good? Oh no, you're not. You okay? Oh gosh, are you okay? Oh, I didn't notice that moan. He goes, ooh. <laughs> he even moans like Jason. Holy. I wonder if that would scare the kids even more, though, right? Watch his neck when he smashes. Oh. Are you okay? You alright? You good? Oh, no, you're not. You okay? Oh, gosh. Are you okay? Oh, I think he knocked the wind out of himself. That's what. That's what that that's what that moan is. You know, if you've had your wind knocked out, that's the moan you make. All right, we got three more to go. Let's bust them out quick. Bust, bust. This one's crazy. What happened? I fell through the roof, Joey. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, it cuts off too soon. There's no way. He fell through the roof, Jody. What do you think happened? That's what she was going to say. What happened? I fell through the roof, Jody. What? <laughs> Jody had the camera ready. Jody is like, this is a viral moment. <laughs> and Jody set up that roof. She wanted that girl to fall through. What's all the stuffing? What's with all the like, is that insulation? What is that? What happened? Must be insulation. I fell through the roof, <laughs> Jody. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jody. Why is she crying? You know? Is she hurt? Is that why she's crying? Or is she crying because she feels bad about the roof? Or is it a combination of both? If it was me who fell through that roof, I'd be... Well, unless I was painfully injured. Which she doesn't look injured. She's got a guitar in her hand. <laughs> Maybe she was playing Oasis upstairs and fell through the roof. <laughs> what happened? I fell through the roof, Jody. What <laughs> <laughs> I love how Jody comes in and says, what happened? She goes, what the fuck do you think happened, Jody? There's a hole in the ceiling and there's insulation all over the floor. And I'm, I'm fucking sitting here and I was up there before. What the fuck do you think happened, Jody? What happened? I fell through the roof, Jody. <sighs> Man, uh, she's like, she's traumatized there. Cause she's just, she has the guitar in her hand and she's like fixing the guitar, picking the insulation off. Yeah. That's going to stick with her for the rest of her life. That kid didn't fall through though. He just showed up like Jody did. What do we got here? I'm collecting CDs. Oh, great. So if you have any CDs for sale for free and you live near Takara, give me a call. For sale for free? one one five one six three six five is oh two one one five one six three six five okay i'll give you a ring if you like my videos on facebook and instagram please let me know the power is yours okay good the power is yours do you got any cds for sale for free uh i don't i actually listen to my cds so you're not getting any of them but I got a girl I can hook you up with. She's a great singer. Uh, she doesn't have CDs, but she could sing for you. She can sing Oasis. I feel like these two would be a great match. Honestly, they kind of look the same. You know what? This might actually be the same person. They might be brother and sister. But uh, I'm sure they're down to fuck either way. Good morning. Good morning. I'm collecting CDs. Yes, okay. So if you have any CDs... Good morning. I'm collecting CDs. CDs for sale for free. Mm. You live near Takara? Give me a call. I'll give you a call. 021 uh, Give him a call. He's got his phone number out on the internet now. So even if you don't have CDs, just give him a ring. See what's up. I might need, I actually might need to get my glasses because I'm going to have to read some shit in a second here. So I'm actually going to have to get my glasses. Hang on a second, boys. I 
I don't care if it reflects. I could give a shit. <laughs> All right, I got to read. Sometimes you got to read, okay? I can't help it. Okay, we got one more, and I think it is kind of similar to the Oasis vid. Is this guy playing Oasis? I actually don't even remember. No. Oh, that's violent. Violent. Look, you can see him walking up here. He's kind of... <laughs> Ooh, he's mad. Ooh, he's mad. Clearly, they're not friends. Or maybe they are, and he's getting revenge for some reason. Wow, that would suck. Oops, I just closed everything. Who would have known if you drag three fingers across your trackpad, everything closes? <laughs> I love chewing on this, but it's disgusting. It's got all my breath from 14 years in here. Ah, sweet Caroline. Bah, bah, blah. Sweet Caroline. Wow. God, I t the videos that end quick, they're fun and they're funny, but I, I, you always want to see the rest. It, it makes you itch for more. Are you itchy? Are you itchy? Cause I am. <gasps> I'm itchy for a story. A spooky story. It's time to get fucking creepy now. Enough fun. We're done with the fun. It's time to end the fun now. We don't need fun around here. We need to get fucking spunked, dude. And you know what? I don't give a shit that it's Halloween. I'm sweating my balls off in this costume, and I'm taking it off. Yeah, you heard me. No more dragon. Now doesn't that feel nice? Oh yeah, dude. Oh, I feel nice. Yeah, cold and refreshed. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a long story. So strap in. But I'll tell you what. It may be long, but it's worth the listen. It is so horrifying it is terrifying it is terribly snaggably scary and as long as you stick with me you're gonna enjoy it just as much as the next guy so grab a bucket of popcorn and grab your favorite sodi and sit the fuck down because we're about to get goddamn spooked up in here it's going to be the scariest moment of your entire life. I goddamn guarantee it. The title reads, My wife has been peeking at me from around the corners and behind furniture. It's gone from weird to terrifying. And we begin. My wife Lynn and I have been together for six years and married for 11 months. Our entire history together has been very normal, and never once have I noticed any weird behaviors or red flags. I can't stress enough how out of character this whole thing is for her. Lynn is very kind, intelligent, and thoughtful. 
She's always been the no-nonsense type of person. Being childish or trying to scare me is not something she'd normally do. She doesn't even like watching horror movies. When we first started dating, she agreed to watch The Shining with me because she knew how much I loved horror. She was so scared that she didn't even make it through half of the movie before we had to turn it off. She isn't into anything creepy and has never been into pranks. It's just not her cup of tea. And that's fine. But that's what was so strange about this. It's just unlike her. I should also add that she never had any mental health issues. And as far as I'm aware, it doesn't run in her family. I know some people are able to hide their mental health problems, but in the six years we've been together, I think I'd have seen some sort of sign. Two months ago, I was in the kitchen making myself some coffee before work. I was running a bit late that morning, and I knew I wouldn't be able to make it to Dunkin' Donuts for my usual morning fix. I took a sip of coffee as I hurried down the hall towards the front door, when I happened to notice Lynn peeking at me from around the corner ahead of me. I could only see her eyes and a strand of her long, dark hair hanging against the wall. The rest of her body was concealed behind the door. I nearly spilled my coffee when I saw her. I did burn the shit out of my lips. Jeez, Lynn, I said, wiping a few drops of coffee from my pants. You scared the shit out of me. She immediately popped out of view, like a little kid that had been caught. I heard her scurry off towards the living room. And by the time I got to the front door, she was out of sight. It was really weird, and just totally out of character for her, like I said. But I also found it kind of funny that she was being more playful and a little less serious. I shouted that I loved her and called her a weirdo. As I shut the door behind me, I heard her laughing. Her behavior was a bit odd, but it certainly wasn't something to call a priest over. I forget about it by lunch. By the time I got home, she was her normal self again. I didn't bring it up and neither did she and life went on. The next incident happened three days later. It was around 2 a.m. and I had woken up to get a drink. I was standing at the kitchen island, jug of OJ in hand, when I felt a strong feeling that I was being watched. For whatever reason, I looked down at the floor and saw my wife's smiling face staring back. She was peeking at me from the other side of the island staring up at me with a wide, unblinking eyes and grinning, grinning like the Cheshire cat. I screamed. I'll admit it, not out of irritation, but fear. For some reason, at that moment, I was scared. At the sound of my scream, Lynn scuttled backwards out of my view, her hands and feet smacking the tile floor as she hurried out of the kitchen on all fours. I didn't run after her, or even yell after her. I just stood there, frozen in shock wondered what the fuck had possessed her to do that. It took me a little longer than I'd like to admit to go back upstairs, but I eventually did. When I got to our bedroom, Lynn was lying on her side asleep, or at least pretending to be. I stood there for a while, watching her breathing to be sure she was really asleep. I had the feeling she might jump out at any moment I got into bed, but she didn't. I climbed into bed and she didn't even move. Her breathing was soft and deep and I was starting to wonder if I'd dreamt the whole thing. The next morning I waited for her to come down for her coffee, and after handing her a mug and kissing her cheek, I decided to ask her about it. What was that about last night? I asked. I kept my tone light so I didn't offend or embarrass her. She frowned over her cup of coffee, shaking her head like she had no clue what I was referring to. You were peeking at me from, from over there, I said pointing to the spot on the floor by the kitchen island. She followed my gaze, and when she looked back at me, she burst out laughing. She laughed so hard that I couldn't help but join her. You creep me the fuck out sometimes, you know that? I said. She giggled and set her cup on the counter and wrapped her arms around my neck. You creep me out all the time, so I guess we're even, she teased. We said our goodbyes and left for work. As I drove, I kept thinking about how creepy it had been seeing her grinning at me from behind the island like that. The sounds her hands made on the floor as she crawled away. I told myself she was just trying to be silly, just trying to join me in my love of all things horror. It's not like I was afraid of her, but it still didn't sit right with me. I started seeing her peeking at me more and more, 
Sometimes she'd be peeking out from behind the couch or living room curtains. And once she even managed to get inside her grandmother's old trunk that sits at the front of our bed. I might not have even known she was there at all had the trunk's old hinges not given her away. She had popped the lid just enough so that only half of her face peeked out. She'd been grinning like an excited toddler. It was unnerving. I didn't even know what to say to her. All I could do was stare. When I finally found my voice, I asked her why on earth she was doing this. She didn't answer, but she had slowly closed the lid, shutting herself inside the trunk. I just walked away, feeling disturbed. I didn't understand why she was doing it, but it clearly made her happy. I just hoped she would tire of the game quickly. Lynn didn't peek at me for the next two weeks. I started to think she was done with her weird prank and I was relieved. We were watching a show on Netflix one night and I jokingly said that I hadn't seen her peeking at me lately and that she must have given up on her spy game. She looked at me with a small smile and said, Maybe I've just gotten better at it. I didn't say anything but I wondered whether or not she was joking. For the next few days I couldn't stop thinking about what she'd said. Was she still peeking at me when I wasn't looking, and I just hadn't noticed? And if so, what the hell was she getting out of this? I started to feel paranoid, constantly checking whether she was watching from around the corner or behind a door. I was jumpy whenever I was home and she wasn't in full view of me. I felt stupid and a little crazy. But after a few weeks, without another incident, I began to relax. I stopped checking behind furniture and walls and told myself it was just a bad memory. Then a few days ago, things got so much worse. Lynn left to go to a friend's house and I lounged on the couch and played a couple of games on my laptop. Around 9 p.m. I hopped in the shower and as I was washing soap from my hair, I felt that awful feeling that I was being watched. I slowly opened my eyes and almost had a fucking heart attack. Lynn was peeking from behind the shower curtain, her entire head stretched into the shower, leaving just her body outside. Her long, dark hair hung against the curtain, the ends dripping with water, her mouth hung open with a terrible grin, eyes wide open and red, as if she hadn't blinked in a while. I screamed and jumped back against the wall. She didn't move, nor did her smile waver. Her makeup ran down her cheeks in two black streaks. She looked giddy and completely deranged. I was fucking terrified. We stood like that for a few moments, neither of us saying a word. Finally, after what felt like forever, she slowly pulled her head back out of the shower, and I watched her blurry figure through the curtain as she moved backwards towards the bathroom door. A second later, the bathroom door slammed shut, hard enough to rattle the mirror. I screamed again and jumped out of the shower to lock the door. I stayed inside the bathroom for over an hour. Maybe I overreacted to some of you, but joke or not, I wasn't going to put up with that crazy shit anymore. That's what I keep telling myself as I paced in the bathroom, stopping to listen at the door every few minutes. Suddenly I heard a muffled sound. I pressed my ear against the bathroom door, straining to listen. I couldn't hear anything, but I envisioned Lynn standing on the other side of the door, giggling at her joke. I felt a surge of anger. I was beyond pissed at being made to feel scared in my own house and made to hide in the bathroom for an hour. All for what? Some joke? If it was a joke, it was an awful one. What the fuck, Lynn? I snapped. That shit is getting really fucking annoying. I waited for her to apologize or to call me a jerk, but instead I heard a faint moan. So quiet, I wondered if I heard it at all. And then complete silence. Lynn? I called out, not even able to hide the shakiness in my voice. I got no response, just my own heavy breathing. I swear to God, just fucking stop it. I yelled, pounding my fist on the door. I waited for her to cuss me out, something I would expect from me talking to her like that. I never screamed at her before, but there was nothing, just the occasional drip from the shower head. I won't deny that I was scared, too afraid to open that damn door and face my own wife. I waited for another 30 minutes or so, which feels like a fucking lifetime when you're scared. Finally I decided I wasn't going to spend the night hiding in my bathroom, so I got down on my knees and peered under the door. I almost expected to see her face peeking back at me, but thankfully I didn't. I could see straight down the hallway, to the top of the stairs, but no Lynn. 
I didn't know if I should be happy about that or not. I looked for a few minutes, waiting to see her head pop up over the top of the step. But it never came. I stood up, my hand hovering over the door and mentally prepared myself to open it. I slowly turned the lock with shaky fingers and was about to yank it open when I heard a sound that still makes me feel nauseous when I think about it. A moan, louder than before. But this time, I was able to tell just where it was coming from. I turned my head to the closest door, as if in slow motion, and locked eyes with my wife, who was peeking at me from a slight gap. Her eyes were still wide as ever, and her mouth was hanging open in the most grotesque, gaping smile I'd ever seen. I didn't scream. I was too scared for even that. Her hands were clasped to her chest, body trembling with sheer delight. As if she could barely contain her excitement, a short raspy moan bubbled from her throat, deep and raw, sending a shiver through my entire body. Somehow I found the ability to pull the bathroom door open and ran as fast as I could down the steps, snagging my keys and phone from the table in the living room before running outside to my car. I could hear her shrill laughter behind me, but I didn't hear her get closer. I didn't bother shutting the front door. I drove away from the house faster than I legally should have, shivering the entire time, either from fear or the cold, maybe a little bit of both. I hadn't grabbed a coat or even put on a pair of shoes. I was still in my boxers and my hair was still damp. I drove straight to my brother Chris's house, about 40 minutes away, ignoring any and every call and text I got. I didn't check my phone until I was safely parked in my brother's driveway. Lynn had called four times and sent a flurry of texts, all wondering where I'd gone and why I'd left like that. I threw my phone at the dash in a rage, furious at, at her nonchalant attitude. My brother and his wife were surprised to see me, especially dressed in just a pair of boxers, but told me to stay as long as I needed. Chris lent me some clothes and asked what happened. I told him Lynn and I had had a fight, but didn't get into the details. I didn't want him to think I was overreacting, leaving my wife over a prank, even if it was a strange one. I mean, I hadn't encouraged her for years to lighten up, instead of being so serious all the time. I had wanted her to relax and loosen up, but this was definitely not what I had in mind. I tried to sleep on their sofa, but my brain wouldn't let me sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw Lynn's face staring up at me from inside the closet. Knowing she'd be in there with me the entire time made my skin crawl. She'd never let the fucking bathroom at all. Instead, she slipped me inside the closet and slammed the bathroom door shut to fool me. The mere thought of going back home gave me anxiety. I tossed and turned, unable to sleep. Chris ended up giving me a sleeping pill so I was able to get a little rest. My sleep was filled with terrible dreams, all of Lynn's smiling face. I woke up just as the sun started to rise. My sore body ached from the sofa, and I felt drained. I knew I'd have to call Lynn at some point, but I didn't know what to say to her. I wouldn't be going home unless she gave me her word she'd never do any more creepy shit. I just wanted my wife back. Her normal, serious self never looked so good to me. I was contemplating calling her and telling her that, when that familiar feeling came over me, I was being watched. I was staring at the ceiling, my heart in my throat. I didn't want to look away, but the longer I ignored that feeling, the worse it got. My eyes drifted away from the ceiling, almost on their own. Her face was pressed up against the window beside the couch, staring at me with that same gaping smile. Drool dribbled down her lips, leaving two long streaks down the glass. I didn't know how long she'd been there, but something told me she'd been there quite a while, possibly all night. I didn't bother screaming, though I was afraid anger trumped any fear I felt at that moment. I jumped up from the couch and pounded my palm against the glass. Lynn, are you crazy? What the hell is wrong with you? Just go home, I shouted. Now! She didn't move, and her ghastly expression never changed. If anything, her smile only grew, as if she had never been more elated. 
I could hear Chris and his wife moving around upstairs, as if Lynn could hear them from her place outside. Her head twitched slightly in their direction, and she began to close her mouth slowly. Chris called my name from upstairs, obviously concerned. I turned to see him and his wife Rebecca hurrying down the steps. When I turned back to the window, Lynn was gone. The only sign she'd been there at all were the two streaks of drool still dripping down the glass. I tried explaining to Chris and Rebecca about waking up to see Lynn watching me through their window. They were skeptical. Who wouldn't be? Chris and I went outside to the spot in the front of the window, but there were no footprints in the dirt, just a slight indent. Animal, probably, Chris guessed, and I didn't argue. He and Rebecca assumed I dreamt the entire episode, but they didn't understand, and I was too tired to explain it to them. I called out of work that day and turned my cell off. I didn't want to face Lynn. Just talking to her was too much for me at that point. I really started to believe something was irreversibly wrong with her. No matter what promises she made, we'd never be the same again. The thought saddened me to my core. I cried most of the morning. By noon I figured I was ready to confront her, give her one last chance to explain herself. I could at least give her that after six years, I told myself. I turned my phone on and saw the dozens of texts she sent me, all from seemingly concerned wife. Can we talk? I love you. Please call me. I'm really worried. Can you answer? Just come home. And more of the same. All texts telling me she loved me and she wanted me home. How worried she was. Not a damn one addressing the crazy shit she pulled. Like she hadn't been acting like a character from a Stephen King book. Her texts were different. She normally texted me novels just to tell me to pick up a loaf of bread. You'd think she'd have more to say to me after her bizarre shenanigans. I know it probably seems childish to some of you who are miles away from the situation, but if you saw the way Lynn had looked at me, how she scampered away on all fours like some wild animal, grinning at me from inside the closet like a lunatic, then I think you'd find my reaction was warranted. I ended up staying with Chris and Rebecca for another night. I didn't wake up yesterday until noon, and thankfully, I didn't see Lynn's face watching me through the window. I didn't want to pry, because it's not my place. But is this fight something that can be mended? Rebecca asked. She made us both a sandwich for lunch, and I knew she wanted to breach the subject without seeming to be nosy. I don't know. I just... She's like a different person, I said, choosing my words carefully. I still wasn't ready for her or Chris to know the full extent of the batshit craziness I had been dealing with. People change, Ben, but she's still the same woman you married. Maybe you both need to just talk through your issues. Whatever's going on, I'm sure it can be fixed, she said. Ever the peacemaker? I think it's beyond that now. I don't think talking would help. I just don't trust her, I said. The words stung in my heart. I missed and loved my wife. But how could I live with someone like that? Living in constant fear didn't sound too appealing. Lynn loves you. She has to be absolutely crushed, she said. I don't know about that, I said. Well, she certainly seemed like it to me. I've never seen her so upset. Very much unlike Lynn, I know, Rebecca said, shaking her head softly. It took a full minute for her words to really sink in, and when they did, I felt dread warming its way through my skin. Wait, what do you mean? You saw her? You saw Lynn? I asked, my mouth suddenly dry. Rebecca nodded casually as if the, that fact wasn't nightmare fuel. Maybe for her it wasn't. She stopped by this morning just after Chris left for work, she said, cleaning the plates from the table. I didn't see her car though, maybe she took an Uber or something. Beck. What did she say? Did did she come inside? I asked, sweat starting to break out in my forehead. I began looking around, examining corners as though a predator lurked behind them. No, she just asked if you were awake yet, and I said that you weren't. I asked if she wanted me to wake you, but she said no. She just said let you sleep. She said as she washed the dishes. That's all? She didn't say anything else? I asked. No, 
She looked awful, though. Like she hadn't slept in days. I think you should call her. I got up from the table and thanked Rebecca for lunch. I felt a little bit better at the knowledge that at least she hadn't come inside. Still, I needed to double check that the doors were locked. I sat for a while trying to figure out what to do next. I didn't want to go home, but I felt that I owed it to Lynn to help her if I could. Hadn't I sworn an oath to love and honor her through sickness and in health? Clearly she was very sick. If she was sick, which I truly believe she was, I had to try and get her help she needed. But I didn't even know where to start. I didn't want to call the police, and besides, what the hell was I going to tell them? That my wife was peeking at me? That she was being creepy? As bizarre as she'd been, she still hadn't committed any crime. Not yet, anyway. The police would have probably said that I was overreacting. But this wasn't some prank. It felt wrong. Dangerous, even. Like something sinister lurked beneath her smile. I knew as her husband, I was well within my rights to have her committed. But what if she simply acted normal in their presence? She'd obviously been able to fool Rebecca into thinking she was a concerned wife. As long as the doctors didn't find her a danger to herself or others, they'd have no choice but to release her after 72 hours. I felt lost and overwhelmed. So I did what any husband in my position would do. I called her mother. I didn't want to, believe me. Her mother, Mary Ann, and I were never on the best of terms. We'd never fought or anything like that. She just wasn't a very warm person and wasn't really easy to get along with. She hardly ever smiled, and when she did, only her lips would move in a thin-lipped smile, leaving her eyes as blank as before. She gave off this aura that felt like she was permanently on the offensive. I'd only met her twice, and both times were for short visits. I got the impression she didn't approve of me for her daughter. Lynn always ushered us out quickly, as she didn't want me to feel uncomfortable, which I was grateful for. Being in her mother's company felt almost unbearable, like walking on glass. I was glad when we moved three states away so we didn't have to see her often. I was happy to avoid the woman, but I needed her help. I really didn't want to talk to her at all, but I had to talk to someone, and someone who knew Lynn better than I did. So I gripped my teeth and I did what I had to. Yes? She answered, already sounding irritated. Marianne, it's me, Ben. Do you have a minute to talk? I asked. I could hear her cluck her tongue in irritation. I'm in the middle of writing some checks, but if you insist, I suppose I can spare a moment. What is it that you want to discuss, Benjamin? She said coolly. It's about Lynn. She's been acting strangely, and I was wondering if you had any idea whether there was something... I was quickly interrupted. It's a bit difficult to follow your rambling, Benjamin. What is it that you want from me? She asked. I could almost see her standing there in her thin sweater and slacks, tapping her fingernails impatiently on the table. I wanted to know if you ever noticed anything odd, behavior or possibly any mental health issues, I asked. There was a few long, uncomfortable pause that I couldn't tell was because she was just thinking or something else. Finally, after a few seconds, she spoke. I'm not sure if this is one of your jokes, Benjamin, but if so, I don't find the humor in it. Now, I do have business to attend to, as I've said, so if you don't mind, she said, but I cut her off before she could get rid of me. Marianne, it's not a joke. I'm sincerely concerned about Lynn's mental health. Her behavior has been very erratic lately. I'm very worried about her, and I figured, as her mother, you would be as well. I said, my frustration evident in my voice. If you are truly concerned, then I suggest you get a mental health professional involved. I don't know what you expect of me, she snapped. I could tell she was seconds away from hanging up, but for some reason I was desperate to not let her. I had the feeling that she knew a lot more than she was letting on. Please, if not for me, do it for Lynn, I tried. I heard a faint shaky intake of breath, as if she were trying to hold her steely persona together but failing. Marianne, what's wrong? I started. Benjamin? 
I don't know what to tell you. My only advice would be to seek professional help. Do not call here again. Goodbye. I tried to call out to her, but she'd hung up. I tried to wrap my head around the call and her refusal to help me. Even if she didn't like me, why wouldn't she want to help her own daughter? I couldn't understand that. I tried to replay the conversation, desperate to find something I missed. After a while, I almost gave up, until I remembered her last words to me, seek professional help. She'd said those words with a bit of urgency. I could have just been grasping at straws, but no. I was sure her voice had changed ever so slightly when she said that, as if they were very important. What had she meant? I'd assumed she'd been referring to medical professionals, but maybe she was referring to someone else. Someone that she didn't for some reason feel comfortable saying directly, or maybe I was just desperate. I waited for Chris to get home, and after a long and exhausting conversation with him and Rebecca, I convinced them that Lynn truly needed psychiatric help. I didn't tell them everything. I wasn't prepared to go into it yet, but I told them about our last encounter, how she'd hidden in the bathroom peeking at me from the closet. They were obviously shocked, but thankfully they believed me. They too just wanted to help her. Still, they didn't think it was all that serious. Weird, maybe, but not dangerous. They just kept saying that Lynn had to be playing some kind of weird joke. Maybe for YouTube? Rebecca offered, if only half-heartedly. Chris didn't think we should involve the police just yet. He offered instead to go with me, and I readily accepted. He reasoned that calmly, talking to her, trying to coax her into going willingly, was the best recourse. I agreed to do it in his way. At least I wouldn't be going into that house alone. We drove over this morning just after breakfast. There was no way I was going at night. When we pulled into the driveway, my stomach began doing somersaults. Her car wasn't there, but I still didn't let my guard down. The front door was ajar, and for a split second I thought we'd seen her eyes staring through the gap. I was shaking and starting to sweat. Chris, however, was fine. He waited for me to open the door, his hands in his pockets like he was going on a fucking stroll through the park. I envied his ignorance. I pushed the door open and was immediately hit with the stench of rot. Chris smelled it too. And he walked into the house behind me with his nose scrunched up. What do you guys use to clean the floors around here, shit? Chris mumbled. Shut up, I said, my eyes darting around for any signs of Lynn. The house was deadly quiet and dark, despite being ten in the morning. All the curtains were closed up tight, refusing to allow any sunlight inside. If I hadn't left it just two days prior, I'd have thought the house had been abandoned. We moved through each room, carefully checking any place that she might hide, occasionally calling her name. Why the fuck are you looking under the couch? Chris asked eventually. Aren't we looking for your wife? He was looking at me like I was a moron. Let's just go upstairs, he, I whispered. He shook his head but followed me up the stairs to check the bathroom and spare bedroom. On the way up, my shoes crunched over pieces of glass that looked to be littered all over the steps. I noticed that one of Lynn and my wedding portraits that hung on the wall along the staircase had been smashed. The frame hung crookedly, all the glass removed. I stared at the picture, a lump forming in my throat. We had taken the photo just after leaving the church, after saying our vows. She looked so beautiful in her white gown. I looked at Lynn's beautiful face. I never dreamed her face would ever be a source of terror for me. We climbed the rest of the steps and checked the spare bedroom, but it looked completely untouched. I was hesitant to go into the bedroom, into the bathroom, my fear from that night coming back to me all at once. Chris noticed and offered to go in by himself, but I couldn't let him do that. So we walked in together, checking the closet and the shower. The bathroom looked as if it hadn't been touched since I left that night. I don't think she's here, Ben. Why don't you pack some clothes and we'll try coming back tomorrow or something? Chris said. I nodded and went into her bedroom and shoved some clothes into a duffel bag. When I checked inside our closet, I came across the source of the smell and gagged. 
Chris took one look and lost all color in his face. He had to go stand by the stairs to get away from the sight and smell. I gazed down in shock at what lay inside my bedroom closet, soaking into the rug were at least a dozen eyeballs, all carefully laid out in pairs. Some were as large as a quarter while others were as tiny as a marble. I stared down at the eyes she'd collected from small animals and I wondered how she'd gotten them and shuddered at the thought. Man, I thought I had it bad with Becca's shoe addiction, but fuck me. Your wife's in here collecting eyeballs, Chris said, gagging. Ben, I think we should go. He called from the hall. I'm getting nauseous. All right. I grabbed my duffel bag and shut the closet door on my new nightmare. I stepped out into the hall and took a deep breath of air. I could taste the rot on my tongue and I couldn't help but gag. Who the fuck lines up eyeballs in their closet like that, Chris mumbled. I tried to tell you she needed help, I said. She doesn't need help, Ben. She needs a fucking exorcist, he said. You coming or what? I can't stand the smell. Any his... His words died in his throat, and his eyes grew wide with fear. I didn't ask him why, I could feel it. Someone was watching me, and I didn't think it was eyes in the closet. I turned around, my eyes slowly scanning the bedroom. Christ, I whispered as I finally saw what we'd missed. Under the bed, curled on her side, watching us with excitement of a kid on Christmas morning was my wife. She held her hands together, just under her chin, and they were shaking, eagerly. Now that she knew she'd been found, I could hear the quiet noises she was making. A sort of hiccuping sound in her throat, as if the excitement was just too much for her. It was unnerving to say the least. Wide eyes, and that same huge smile. Everything in me told me to run, but I forced it away. This was my wife. No matter how twisted, she was still the woman I had married. I had to help her. Lynn, I said softly. She didn't respond but her head bobbed back and forth in two quick little movements as if she were nodding. Baby, I just want to help, okay? Can you, can you let me do that? I asked. I had taken a single step forward approaching her, like some kind of dangerous animal. I love you, Lynn, I said softly, taking another step closer. She let a tiny moan escape her wide open mouth, and I had to resist the urge not to run. Her shoulders were starting to quiver, and her eyes grew as large as saucers. I crouched down so I could see her better and immediately saw the blood. Her hands were covered in it. They trembled more the closer I got, as if she was barely able to contain herself. Lynn, are you hurt? You're bleeding, I said. She bobbed her head again her bloody fingers moving up and down as as if playing an invisible piano. They occasionally grazed her chin, leaving smears of blood on her skin. I wanted to recoil in disgust. The smell that was coming off her was revolting. I could tell the vomit trying to climb up my throat. Her lips were dry and stretched thin, blood seeping between the cracks. I knew she wouldn't come on her own, but I didn't want to leave her in the state she was. I scooted closer and reached out to her. The excited hiccuping sounds got louder, and her hands shook, fingers flexing. It was then that I could see the blood oozing from between her fingernails. Oh my god, Lynn, you're bleeding, I said, instinctively. I reached out to take her hand, but before I could even touch her, Her hand sprang out towards me. A sharp pain shot through my arm. I fell back on my ass. My arm burned and I could see the blood dripping down onto the carpet. I looked back at her in shock and saw her grinning madly, her fingers clutching a sharp shard of glass. You all right in there? Chris asked from behind me. I turned my head slightly and nodded to him, cradling my arm to my chest. When I turned back to face Lynn, I saw that her focus had shifted. She wasn't looking at me anymore, and she wasn't smiling anymore either. She was staring past me, her eyes glaring at Chris, the way a hungry lion might stare at an antelope. 
Her mouth was still hanging open, but it was twisted into a snarl. I got to my feet and began walking backwards towards the hall, afraid to take my eyes off of her. Are you bleeding? Chris asked. The moment the words left his mouth, Lynn started fast, scooting out from under the bed, the glass shards still in her fist. Chris, run! Go! I yelled. He must have been too afraid to move because a second later I felt my back bump into him. He was still standing at the top of the stairs, staring at the horror that was my wife. Lynn had crawled completely out from under the bed and stood in the bedroom doorway. Her face twisted in rage. Her whole body was visibly tense. Blood ran down her fingers and onto the floor. Jesus, Lynn, Chris said. You, uh, playing hide and seek? I reached back and pushed him towards the steps. Move your ass, Chris, I said as quietly but firmly as I could. Holy fuck, how long is this story? Okay. Where am I here? Lynn bobbed her head in fast, sharp motion and began to grin, stretching her mouth open wider and wider so that her chin seemed to touch her chest. I heard Chris mutter a prayer, and then he was running down the stairs. I stood at the top of the steps, stuck between the love for a woman who clearly needed seriously serious help and self-preservation. I only want to help, I said, choking back tears. Her eyes focused on me once again as she slowly lifted the glass, holding it out in front of her. And then she started sprinting towards me, grinning with utter excitement. Thankfully, my body took over and I flew down the stairs, skipping two or three at a time. I made it to the front door before I felt her leap onto my back, wrapping her arms around my neck, her open mouth next to my ear so that I could hear those terrible hiccuping sounds up close. I shook her off me, knocking her to the floor. I felt a searing pain in my back as she went, but I tore open the front door and bolted to my car. Chris was standing in the front yard, talking on the phone with the police. I didn't say a word, I just ran into my car and jumped in. Chris took the hint and followed me, still on the line with 911. I watched the rearview mirror, sure I'd see her there, running after us, but I never did. I went straight to the ER and got 11 stitches in my arm and 3 on my back. The police asked a lot of questions and went back to the house to do a search, but of course, Lynn wasn't there. They advised me to stay with a friend or a relative for a while and to do a file and to file a restraining order as soon as I could. But none of the things would matter. Somehow I just knew. I dropped Chris off at home and went to a motel an hour away. I wanted to put as much distance between me and Lynn as I could. This is where I've been for the last four hours. I thought maybe the police would find her. Maybe they got her the help she desperately needs, but now I don't think so, because 40 minutes ago I got a text from an unknown number, just three words, I found you, and a picture attached. The picture was dark and grainy, but I instantly knew what it was. There was no mistaking my wife's eye. I started typing this out immediately after. I don't know what to do. I'm alone and scared and I can't help but feel that I am being watched.